we are asked to evaluate the line integral along the curve C of f dot differential r with the vector field f is given here and the curve C is the circle of radius four centered at the origin parameterized in the counterclockwise direction as shown here. One way to interpret the meaning of the value of the line integral would be the amount of work the force field or vector field does on a particle as it travels around the circle with this orientation. Looking at this graphically, the vector field F is graphed in purple and the curve C is graphed in red. If we take a look at this point here, the value of the line integral represents the amount of work the vector field or force field does on the particle as it travels around the circle. Going back to our work, the first step is to find the vector function r of t that will trace out the curve c in the xy plane. Remember the parametric equations for a circle centered at the origin are x equals r cosine t and y equals r sine t, where in our case r is equal to four, which means r of t has an x component of four cosine t and a y component of four sine t. And to have a counterclockwise orientation, we would have t greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to two pi radians. Looking at our notes below, the line integral along the curve C of f dot differential r equals the integral from a to b of f of x of t comma y of t dotted with r prime of t differential t. Which means the next step is to write the vector field f as a function of t using x equals four cosine t and y equals four sine t. The given x component is three x minus y, which means in terms of t we have three times four cosine t minus four sine t, and therefore we have an x component of 12 cosine t minus four sine t. The given y component is x plus five y. In terms of t, we have four cosine t plus five times four sine t, which gives us a y component of four cosine t plus 20 sine t. We also need to find r prime of t. Let's go ahead and do that now. The x component is equal to the derivative of four cosine t, which is negative four sine t. And the y component is equal to the derivative of four sine t, which is four cosine t. And now we have all the information that we need. The given line integral is equal to the integral from a to b, which is from zero to two pi, of f of x of t comma y of t, dotted with r prime of t, f of x of t comma y of t has an x component of 12 cosine t minus four sine t and a y component of four cosine t plus 20 sine t. I'm gonna dot this with r prime of t which has an x component of negative four sine t and a y component of four cosine t. Now let's go to the next slide and determine this dot product. Determining the dot product, we have the quantity 12 times cosine t minus four sine t times negative four sine t, and then plus the quantity four cosine t plus 20 sine t times four cosine t. Forming distribution, we have negative 48 cosine t sine t, and then plus 16 sine squared t. And here we distribute four cosine t, which gives us plus 16 cosine squared t, and then plus 80 cosine t sine t. Focusing on this sum here, we can factor out 16, which gives us 16 times the quantity sine squared t plus cosine squared t. We know sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to one, 
and therefore this sum simplifies to 16. And then we have negative 48 cosine t sine t plus 80 cosine t sine t, which is equal to 32 cosine t sine t. All of this simplifies to 16 plus 32 cosine t sine t. So going back to the first slide, we now know this integral is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of 16 plus 32 cosine t sine t differential t. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. To integrate this second term, we need to perform u substitution. So let's break this up into two separate integrals. We have the integral from zero to two pi of 16 plus the integral from zero to two pi of 32 cosine t sine t. The antiderivative of 16 with respect to t is 16 t. To integrate here, we need to perform u substitution. Let's let u equal sine t, and therefore differential u is equal to cosine t dt. So all of this is just 32, again, cosine t dt is du, and this is u, so we have 32u, differential u. The antiderivative of 32u with respect to u is 32 times u squared divided by two, which simplifies to 16u squared. So we have plus 16u squared, but u squared is really sine squared t. And now we can find big F of B minus big F of A. Here, we factor out the 16. We have 16 times the quantity two pi minus zero. Here if we factor out the 16, we have plus 16 times the quantity sine squared two pi minus sine squared zero. Well, sine two pi is zero and so is sine zero. So all this simplifies to zero and this simplifies nicely to just 16 times two pi, which is equal to 32 pi. Going back to the graph one last time, we can think of this value as the amount of work that the purple vector field does on this blue particle as it travels around the red circle. I hope you found this helpful.